to CACLV for hosting this important event. And thank you to all the business partners who are, who are here because as Patricia said at the beginning, this, uh, this community depends on partnerships like, like the ones that we see here today. I'm Susan Wild, and I'm running for Congress. I grew up in a family that lived paycheck to paycheck. My father was born in Alabama, at one of six children, and when he was eight years old, his father died. And for the rest of his childhood, his mother struggled to put food on their table. When he was 17, my father lied about his age to join the Air Force so that he could escape that life. And in many ways, he did escape that life. But you know, once you've experienced poverty, you never really forget it. That's the lesson that I learned from my father. Because the rest of my life, the rest of um, my childhood, I saw my father every night at, sit at the kitchen table and with a little spiral notebook go through and work on our family finances every single night. He never stopped thinking about money. It was the biggest stressor in his life, even though he had gone on and become a military man. I don't know if anybody else's parents ever used the term poorhouse, but my father did. He used it so much that I actually believed when I was a young child that there really was a poorhouse and that we were just a few steps away from it. This story, unfortunately, all these years later, is still all too familiar to far too many Americans. What I've seen firsthand as I've crossed the Lehigh Valley and the, all of the 7th District is that so many people still stress constantly about money, just as my father did many years ago. People are making gut-wrenching decisions every day about whether they're going to pay their rent, their utilities, their medications, or childcare. Let me tell you about Angela. Angela is a real person. She's 58 years old. She lives in this area. I've known her for a number of years. When she was, she's a single woman. When she was in her 20s, she decided to go to secretarial school because she wanted to, to stop working in childcare and wanted an office job. And that's what she's been doing for the last 30 some years. She plays by the rules. She doesn't travel. She rarely goes to the movies. She counts every penny, every single penny. She has her budget figured out down to the last dollar. But a few months ago, Angela found out that her township was going to increase the price of water, which unfortunately, as we all know, is something that's happening across the Lehigh Valley. And her water bill almost doubled, her annual water bill. And all of a sudden, Angela's budget wasn't working out. And she is now terrified, absolutely terrified, that she's going to have to move out of the apartment that she's lived in for several years, that she loves, that she's worked so hard for. She is scared to death of getting sick and losing her job. When I talk to her, as I do probably once a week, I hear fear and despair in her voice every single time. And this is somebody who's working 40 plus hours a week. There are thousands of others in this district who are struggling in exactly the same way. She and they have not seen a penny of the $3 trillion added to the deficit by the Republicans' tax bill. And she and others will lose valuable retirement security if these cuts make their way to Social Security. Republicans want to cut job training and infrastructure investments that create jobs. The booming economy that this president boasts of is not trickling down to these people. They don't have the ability to invest in the stock market, no matter how well it's doing. Their wages, if they have them, are stagnant, and any increase they may see in their paycheck is made up by the higher cost of health care. And that's just the people who are working. Throughout the Lehigh Valley, we have people who, because of disability, illness, age, lack of opportunity, simply are not able to work. We're seeing rising income inequality. The rich are getting richer, and everyday workers are continuing to struggle with stagnant wages and expensive health care. The zip code you were born into isn't supposed to determine your destiny. 
I believe the government does have a purpose. I believe in the concept of good government. In Congress, I will fight for bold solutions and implement policies that directly help our American families, that ensure economic security and equal opportunity for all of us. I will vote to raise the minimum wage to $15 per hour no later than 2024. Families in the 7th District are working 50 to 60 hours a week just to make ends meet on a minimum wage of $7.25 per hour that has not kept up with inflation for decades. Alan told us a little while ago that the federal poverty, uh, poverty level is somewhere around $24,000. If you work 40 hours a week at $7.25 an hour, you're making $15,000 and change, far below that federal poverty level. We must ensure a living wage. It's time for us to think about our workers. No one who is working a full-time job should ever be living in poverty. I will fight to strengthen unions and workers' ability to collectively organize. Unions play a key role in our society and in raising wages overall, investing in training, and reducing income inequality. I will invest in our workers not by putting more money in the pockets of corporations, but by fighting for policies that support our families, paid family leave, equal pay for equal work, affordable childcare. These are just common sense policies. We must invest in apprenticeship programs and skilled training initiatives to ensure that a college education is not a prerequisite to getting a good paying job. We need policies that support our small businesses. We need health care that works for small business owners, for our self-employed, for the gig economy workers, so everyone has access to affordable health care regardless of where they work. In June, the Department of Housing proposed cuts to housing assistance that will increase homelessness and evictions. Legislation in the current House of Representatives controlled by Republicans would triple the minimum rent for those in housing assistance programs and raise rent in subsidized housing for the elderly and disabled. We've seen cuts to veterans homeless funding that have recently effectively shut down Allentown's Hope for Veterans program. A few weeks ago, I visited B'nai B'rith, which houses low-income seniors. The proposed changes by HUD, they told me, people who live there told me, would cause them an immediate harmful impact. Some of them would not be able to afford to live there. Rental assistance programs, vouchers, and public housing must remain intact. We have faced in this country a long-standing housing crisis. We have to work to fix it, not make it worse. And let's talk about food insecurity. One in six families in the United States face hunger. The farm bill that's being voted on this fall in the House would strip critical food assistance from people who need it most, the unemployed and the underemployed. The proposal would take food away from families and effective options away from the states. Right now, the program helps make groceries affordable for workers who face low wages, shifting schedules, or underemployment. Republicans have threatened to cut critical nutrition assistance like SNAP and Meals on Wheels. I was on the board of the Second Harvest Food Bank a few years ago, and there was a program that was actually underwritten by CACLV called Backpack Buddies. And that program, every Friday, sends more than 500 students home with a backpack with food in it so that they can get through the weekend until they come back to school on Monday. Federal funding cuts will eliminate programs like this. And what about our seniors? Republicans are constantly threatening to cut Social Security and Medicare to, to pay for the tax cut bill that gives big tax breaks to corporations and the 1%. I will not stand for balancing the budget on the backs of hardworking Americans who pay into Medicare and Social Security their whole lives. These are earned benefits. And finally, we have to talk about institutional racism. We can't discuss all of these issues without acknowledging that the system we currently have favors some of us while discriminating against others. 
Wealth in this country is unequally distributed by race. Families of color have a harder time getting access to higher education, good paying jobs, and are often discriminated against when they try to access important programs like affordable housing and food assistance. We need a, an economy that works for all of us, not just the wealthy few. We need a government that works for the people, that prioritizes education, that believes in workers, regardless of race, regardless of gender, regardless of the opportunity they are born with. I will not stand for but balancing the budget on the backs of our elderly, our sick, our disabled, our children, our veterans. I really want to be part of the solution. I want to partner with organizations just like this one to bring solutions to communities right here in the 7th District. Please help me get elected on November 6th so that I can fight for good government that works for all of us.